Squadrons are an interesting feature in the grand scheme of Final Fantasy XIV. They're a precursor to the advanced AI and flavor of trusts, but also just end up kind of being forgotten due to just how shoved off to the side they are. Yet they're some of the most useful optional features you could hope to have, especially if you're a solo player without a free company. But before we get more into what squadrons are or how to progress them, let's take a quick talk of the prerequisites. It's actually really easy to unlock them. Back at level 20 in the story, we joined a Grand Company. While progressing through the story, you'll gain plenty of Grand Company seals from Fates and other activities and spend them on rank ups. Keep ranking up until the max. Complete the first two ranks of the Grand Company Hunt Log, complete the two quests that appear to clear Zamile, Darkhold, and Aurum Vale, and eventually reach second lieutenant rank. Very, very easy. If you for some reason lack an income of Grand Company seals enough from just doing the Grand Company Hunt Log, you can do Fates, Gather and Craft Turn-Ins, or even leveling Roulette's Adventurer in Need. There's plenty of sources. Really, unless you're trying to get into ranking up at like level 50 and didn't just naturally progress the Grand Company leveling, this is the easy part. At level 80 or even earlier will work. Getting to maxed out rank and unlocking squads can take under two hours, even if you've not even earned a single Grand Company seal yet. I actually did it the other day. Took a Grand Company from zero all the way up to second lieutenant in no time. But I don't want to spend too much time on the unlocking, I want to spend more time on squads themselves. When you finally reach the rank of second lieutenant, talk to the person behind the counter again and you will unlock squads. Enter the door on the side and begin your long long journey to progressing the squads. When we get in there, there's not much to see. We'll be given a basic squad of three people to start and be able to progress through the tutorial. The tutorial begins with... Leave and go to other stuff. Yeah, weird start, but it is an important thing to learn first. By doing challenge logs, new people will request to enlist in our squad. Anytime you complete a log, check the Adventurer Squadron selection under Timers if you got someone. It does give you an on-screen notification, but I usually miss it. Until then, if nothing else, at least you have a convenient armoire and glamour dresser in here. Let's look at the challenge log itself. Most of these all have some tied in squadron members, except I believe Eureka and Completion. Just about everything else, if not everything else, can give you squad members. And each squad member has specific types of challenges they prefer. One might only show up from treasure hunts and gold saucer challenges. The wiki has the full list of squad members and a list of what challenges spawn them. So go out, do some challenges, kill some fates, do some dungeons, and anything else you might have to do in the challenge log. However, not all challenges will give you squad members. You only have a chance at getting a squad member, even if it can give you one. You may need to do three or four before you get even one squad member. But when you do, you can come back to the barracks. The papers on the table will now have a mark over them, but only for this tutorial section. From now on, you'll have to check the paper or the timer section for any new squad members. No matter who you get though, just take this first person. So we can continue the tutorial. Which is our introduction to missions. The first mission, no matter what, is guaranteed to succeed and reward all of your squad members with some EXP. Send them off and come back in an hour. This is where it becomes clear that squadrons are just fancy retainer ventures. There's no gearing or anything, but you pick an objective, then go away for however long it takes. This first mission is only an hour, so let's go away again. When the timer runs out, talk to the sergeant. Congrats! We had a very basic mission of being NPCs, and we succeeded. Now to celebrate with training, woohoo! The regiment board is key for progression both for EXP and for stats. This is a confusing window at first, so let's break it down. On the left, we have all of the different types of training. Strength, mental, tactical, 
combinations of the two trainings, and a balance of all three at once. We also see we have a daily limit of three trainings. On the right we have stats. A base level of 120 out of 200 total stats and bars that show the spread of these stats. This is completely separate to the stats of each individual member. This is a squad bonus that applies for everyone. And at the bottom we have our squad. If someone will level up from training, it will tell you here. Hovering over each training, we see how it affects our stats. Each training will add 40 points to our stats, except for the balanced training, which will do nothing. Add points wherever you wish to start, but I'd say strength is the best option to start, but there is no one way to do all of this. No matter what you pick, you are likely to move stats around later. But for now, pick one, and wait another hour. Well, like I said, fancy retainers. Most of what we do here will be waiting. One hour later we can talk to the board, see our success, and that's it, the tutorial is finally over. I recommend doing another training at least before doing the next mission just to max out your training stats. But otherwise it's now time for a real mission. We have a list of level 1 to 15 missions, each given their own EXP, having a GC seal cost to send the squadron out, and at the top, stat requirements. It seems to me the following. Each stat threshold that is asked for is a 33.33% chance at completion of the mission. So this level 1 mission, all three stats are blue, and I have a 100% chance to complete the mission. The sergeant at the bottom even says as such. Pick another mission though, and some turn red. His flavor text will change for how many different stats are failing to meet the requirement, and so does the chance to fail the mission. You can't do a higher level mission than the highest level squad member you sent out, so to start this will be no worry. At worst, only one stat will be below the minimum, and you will have a high chance of success. So send them off, and come back in... 18 hours? Real missions are actually 18 hours long. Highland exploration, just like retainers. So go do stuff, and probably complete more challenge logs, and potentially get more squad members. You can have up to 8 of them, and until you have 8 of them, just take anyone and everyone who comes your way. You can even do training while the main squad is off on missions to boost your off-duty members' levels or change around stats for the next mission. You got 18 hours of free time after all, so might as well spend some of it training everyone else. When the squad returns, you'll be told if they succeeded or failed and an overview of their leveling progress. And a lot of empty space that will be filled up later. Now for another mission. We can't repeat the same mission over and over because they're weeklies. You are warned of this, but now it's actually going to matter. You were forced to try harder missions and potentially fail due to stat spreads. But now, with five members of the squad, we can swap people around in an attempt to hit different stat thresholds and attempt to tilt the odds back in our favor. This level 15 mission though has a special reward you will definitely want when you have someone above level 15. Enlistment manuals turn a chance to get a squad member into a guaranteed join the next time you complete a relevant challenge log. Extremely beneficial for this early point, and doing said swaps and tilting the odds. The other way to tilt the odds is some min-maxing on your squad trainings. After hitting the cap of training stats, further training that isn't the balanced training will remove points from stats and put them into others. I'm sticking to all and just the strength for now, just because I only have one strength based member as we hit level 20 on at least one member for our first flagged mission, a rank up mission. Flagged missions are all or nothing, you either succeed or you fail. You must hit the stat requirements for all three specialties. This is where the min-maxing comes in. You'll have to swap around members of the team, train in different tiers, or just brute force it by leveling up a bunch more. 
Some people also say that there is a chance to succeed even without meeting all the stats, but I have never seen it succeed. No matter what path you choose, get the stats and go complete it. Spam as many missions as needed to get high up in level and all to meet the stat requirements. Wake up tomorrow and you'll be rewarded with a weird book and Squadron Rank 2. Let's start with the book. Go talk to a Squadron member and hit the left button. You can freely swap everyone's class on the fly now, provided you have books to do so. You can earn more of these from more missions. But don't count on them. Not until you're basically done with Squadrons will these come into play at any good level. More importantly, we have more missions to do, from level 20 to level 35. These are much harder to get the stats for, but the rewards are worth far more than before. You are likely to start seeing failed missions now, but that's okay. If you haven't seen one already, a failed mission will give you half the EXP reward of a success, so it's not a total waste. But one more thing has also unlocked. Command missions. This is a useful way to grind jobs without worrying about queue times. Not all dungeons are in here, but they go all the way up to level 60, so there's a lot of options, and this is a side way of grinding up levels without worrying about queues as I said. It also gives you squad EXP, so any of those missions that are causing issues can be potentially quickly brute forced with a bit of grinding. Just make sure you and the squad members meet the minimum level requirements to get into the dungeon. You will want to do these, but there's a bit of roughness to them. The AI is terrible. Tank positioning and aggro management is all but nothing. They don't follow any real rotations, but their damage is good despite that. And they don't do mechanics or dodge AoEs. You have to use the engage slash disengage buttons on this little pop out to move them as needed. These can also be found in the actions menu, so you can put them on your hotbars if you need to. But you can see all the issues here in this second Halatali boss. The boss is always messy even with real players, but it's even worse with the squad members as they just don't listen. Also if a squad member dies, uh, hope you have a raise. That would just go kill yourself and then you'll start at the beginning of the dungeon with everyone alive. There is one special button though, Ungermax, a squadron limit break. You can use limit break still, but this is better. It not only does a bit of damage, but gives everyone a damage up buff for a few seconds. It also only spends one bar of limit break, not the entire thing. Use this to make quick work of bosses and get some refund from the dungeon drops and sell them back to your grand company. When you come out, you will get EXP, potentially some special potions only usable in squadrons, and a new tactics. Talk to any squad member and you can, as they unlock them, change their tactics to give them different buffs. Each one has five levels too. Ultimately though, the goal is to just keep going till you have everyone at level 5 offense. This includes the tanks and healers, just because they ignore most of the damage and the healer is not going to mess up anything special. Which tactics you get from a mission seems entirely random, so just keep pushing command missions until you get what you want. There's a line of achievements involved in command missions too. But the most rewarding one is to do 10 command missions. Do 10 and you will get a set of emotes. All the little training exercises they do when you set them off to train. The push-ups, the sit-ups, and all that. Otherwise, it's back to sending them off on ventures for the big EXP rewards and doing other things while they work on themselves. Don't forget to do training too, as ranking up to rank 2 also boosted your maximum training points to 280. But then comes when they get back from the mission successfully. There is a chance for each member who went on the mission to get new buffs called chemistries. They're conditional operations usually. If someone has a specific race or gender or a mission level, you can get special rewards. This first one I got is if there is an aura going on the mission with my tank, 
they can get some books to turn anyone into a DPS class. Go to the specific squadron member on the training board to confirm this chemistry. Chemistries do not automatically apply since each member can only have one, but you can still obtain new chemistries as you go on more missions. And you may get ones that are better or ones that are worse than what you already have. Now comes into play the mission affinity thing in the mission menu. Mission affinities do two things and apply to anyone that falls under the listed criteria, such as role or race. So in this example, it's asking for a marauder, and that's what class my tank is. For one, this forces the chemistry to work no matter what. This group does not have an all raw, but the chemistry works anyway. Secondly, it boosts the power of the chemistry. Instead of a 10% chance to get a book, it's a 100% chance if the mission succeeds. You can't really min-max around mission affinities. Getting good chemistries is hard, and getting good chemistries that work for your squad is even harder. So pay a little attention to the mission affinity, except for when you can abuse it on the fly, which can be hugely worth it when you can. You can get chemistries for materia, crafter scripts, gatherer scripts, or even Mandeville Gold Saucer points for the Golden Saucer. Even if you hate the chemistries you get to start, just like squad members, take whatever you are given as you get it. Some chemistry and some random rewards you can sell or something is better than nothing. For now, just slot in team members' chemistries and keep pushing missions up to level 40. Swap chemistries as you get ones you prefer, just don't forget to do so before sending people off on a new mission, leaving these new chemistries to auto-reject. The moment you send them off, that chemistry is gone. At level 40, we'll once again get a special flagged mission. This one is actually pretty hard to min-max through. You will need to mess around with the training levels, party compositions, and level up as much as you can just to clear the mission. Find a good balance of stats and get as close to success as you can, then train until the threshold is completed. If you can't come close, keep playing around with stats and maybe even start changing classes around if you have books. At worst, you can constantly spam the flagged mission for failures for EXP, but you're better off going for wins on easier missions, it'll be worth more EXP in the end. Which if you didn't notice, when now dealing with level 30 plus squad members, there are no jobs in squadrons, only the 9 classes. The big flip is when you get a 9th squadron member. As I said, you can only have a maximum of 8, so now you have to start deciding who you want to keep around. In this case, I got a second Lancer, who is of a higher level, just barely, than my current Lancer. To me, this can be worth the swap because it means even just a tiny bit more stats for min-maxing. This is also why I said not to care who you get when you start. You can always swap in people you like more, but otherwise turn the new guys away and hope for someone else to show up if you don't like them either. But with enough work, you'll finally hit the magic numbers to succeed the level 40 flagged mission. Do it and get to the big boy slash girl rewards. For a start, Hitting rank 3 with your squad auto-promotes you to first lieutenant. This comes with a new Grand Company seal cap of 80,000. That's a lot of seals. Secondly, we now have a third set of missions. Priority missions that are extra special. You can only do one of these per week. And you're almost guaranteed to never meet the minimum stat requirements. The best you can hope for is 2 out of 3. These missions are where the best chemistries, like Crafter Script rewards, will come from. But on top of that, the rewards for these missions aren't the EXP, but the scrolls in the mission reward. These are PERSONAL Free Company buffs. Level 3 Free Company buffs at that. For example, Heat of the Battle 3 is a plus 15% EXP boost for everyone in the FC for 24 hours. As a personal buff, 
it's two hours of plus 15% EXP. And I use this wording specifically because they do not stack, as mentioned on the buffs. But you can stack on different buffs. If your FC has me and mead up, throw on heat of the battle for yourself for two hours. It's really, really nice for grinding. There's a bunch of other buffs too, but I like this one the most. But we're not done with progression either. Keep doing missions and trainings, and the new cap for training buff is 400 stats. And the max level isn't until level 60. You will need to boost everyone up to high levels anyway for the level 50 versions of the priority missions and captain rank. But captain rank has another requirement first. Back to command missions. To reach captain rank, you must do five different command missions. This count begins the moment you unlock command missions. I did Holotali back when I first unlocked command missions, then four more, ending on Zamile Darkhold after hitting first lieutenant. The hardest part of this is getting three different squad members all to level 44 to bring on the mission. Upon doing five different missions, you will now have the final flagged missions in the second tier of missions. A level 50 mission with a really easy to achieve stats. By the time you have even one squad member reaching level 50, you will almost guaranteed achieve the minimum stats easily. If not, a little more grinding and you should hit there easily. Complete this flagged mission and you'll instantly be upgraded to Captain Rank, the final rank of Grand Companies, at least as of this video. There are no higher ranks than Captain, and the Grand Company shop outside will have all items available, and your Grand Company seal cap is now 90,000. The shop now includes special Captain Glamour weapons, the warfare books for changing squad member classes, and the manuals for guaranteeing squad members show up for every challenge log completion. Also some emotes. But that's about it. Now you just send them off for dailies over and over, keep spamming training, and come back every week on Tuesday for more personal free company buffs. You can try to min-max chemistries as you go as well, make special squad builds, maybe go for all one race, farm scripts, and the final unlock comes at level 51 for each individual squad member. At level 51 or higher, you can finally take away their ugly armor and manually glam your squad members. So you can force them all to be peak fashion, peak performance, and peak looks. Yeah, that's the stuff. And as I said, as of this video's release, that's the end. That's all there is to it. If they ever add more to squads, I will just copy-paste this video basically and edit in all the new stuff. Because I am not leveling a new character just to do squads a third time. Look below in the description for a link to said video, if that ever happens and use the chapter select and timestamps to skip ahead to the new stuff they add. What you didn't see and will soon experience for yourself is that this took weeks and weeks. I have 40 clips of video before I go to record more to fill in any empty space, and almost all of them are on different days each. Maybe 7 of them for a total of 33 different days of recording. On a final note, if you ever changed grand companies, your squad will follow you, so you don't have to start over if you decide to leave the twin adder and maelstrom losers to join me in the flames. But hey, at least it let me put eight people into pig costumes. Thanks for watching this little foreway into the world of squadrons. I hope it explained to you the things you didn't understand and why it's actually worth building your squadron up and getting it done. Personally, the personal buffs, redundant, are worth it. Even if you're not a one-man army like I am, and you have a free company, the extra buffs are really nice to have around. As a raider, as a casual player, whatever. If nothing else, you can get a few lucky crafter scripts, and unless you like grinding a lot, those aren't exactly easy to farm either. But that's besides the point. Who knows what the future holds for squads? 
but for now, enjoy your new slaves. Take care and may the power of Ananid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. And as usual, there's an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon. And an extra, extra special thanks to Arya Deva, Ayman Al Khatib, Benjamin Han, Body Clock, Ethan, Ethan Olson, Jamie Cotterell, Kyle Steinhauser, Meowfi, Scott Stanley, Valor LLC, and Yvonne the Moose. If you'd like to become one of my patrons, the link is down below, the community discord down below, my Twitter, uh, something else down there too, I think. Whatever. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all of your support, everyone, and have a good day.